Welcome to this video lecture. We are continuing our discussion on optimization using Python and SciPy. Specifically, we're going to be talking about what's called unconstrained optimization. So uh, we will give an example here, but first I'm going to remind you of the architecture of an optimization problem. So we have an objective function. This is the thing that we are trying to minimize. We also have decision variables here. So these decision variables are typically a group of scalars. These are just the degrees of freedom in our system, or these are just the, the different things that we're trying to decide. We lump those together in this vector x, and this tells us, okay, these are the variables that we're iterating over until we find the optimal combination to minimize our objective function. This objective function could be uh, like minimize cost, but we need to reflect cost as a function of all these different decision variables. Our system will also be subject to constraints, including lower bounds and upper bounds on the decision variables themselves. Then we also have uh, equality constraints and inequality constraints. So built into these constraints, this is where we are trying to impose uh, like physical laws or legal laws or just safety constraints into our system. Like we may not want our car to go over 100 miles per hour. Um, we may not want our reactor to heat up to over a thousand degrees. We can put these kind of constraints into here to make sure that our system finds an optimal solution that is physically realizable and within the safety or uh, other constraints that we might need to impose on it. All right, so just to give a practical example, here is an optimization problem. So we are trying to minimize this function. This function may represent a cost, for example, and maybe we have found a mathematical model of this cost using machine learning. And so we've got this empirical model here that we are trying to minimize. So this becomes our objective function. And note this objective function is a function of this vector x. In this particular format, we have broken up that vector into the different scalars. So here, just to keep this very simple, we have taken our decision variables, we just have two of them, x0 and x1, we lump those into a vector x, but here in our objective function we can spell those out as a function of these different scalars. Um, because this is unconstrained optimization, we're actually not going to have any equality constraints or any inequality constraints. In this particular problem we will have these bounds on our decision variables, uh, but you'll find that the problem we're trying to solve uh, may or may not require these anyway. All right, so this is what an optimization problem may look like. This is a fairly simple one. So be, I'm trying to keep this problem using just two dimensions so that we can view this on a on plots and we can you can start to grasp the concept of it. Often, uh, optimization problems are very complex and you might have a whole bunch. You may have dozens or hundreds or thousands of decision variables and that makes it impossible to visualize because our brains just can't visualize more than two or three dimensions. So what I'm going to do on the next slide is I've just plotted our objective function as a function of x0 and x1. So assume this is like a cost that we're trying to minimize. That objective function uh, may look something like this and I, it does look just like this. This is just plotting this function. All right, so we can look at this, and this is a topographical map where the darker purple means lower values, and as you get into green and yellow, that means the highest values. So because this is a fairly simple problem, and because it's uh, two-dimensional and we can visualize it, um, it's pretty easy to look at where the optimum is. And so the optimum should be right about here, which we can see just by visual inspection. We're still going to go ahead and solve this problem because I want to introduce you to the solvers while trying to help you still map what we're doing mathematically in the optimization solver with a physical understanding of the system. So I'm going to jump over to a Jupyter notebook here and feel free to pause this and copy the code if you want to follow along. So here I'm first just importing the, some of the tools that we'll need. We'll need NumPy and Matplotlib. Uh, so we are, or Matplotlibrary. So we've imported those. Here I'm just defining our decision variable, so I'm just going to define these over a range from 0 to 10 in increments of a quarter. Um, we use this mesh grid command just to overlay our inputs so we can capture uh, all different combinations of our two uh, decision variables here. And here, this is where I'm just plotting that objective function, which we're just calling cost. So I'm not plotting it yet, I'm just defining it. Uh, so I'm, I'm just 
if you're curious and you wanted to copy those plots, here's the code that I use to do that. So we first just define the variables, um, and then we can plot. It's the same plot I just showed on the slide. So if, I'm not going to go too deep into just how you plot this. Um, I'm going to get right into the optimization problem formulation. So here in my Jupyter Notebook, I am importing this minimize command from SciPy. So we say from SciPy to optimize, import this tool called minimize. So uh, using this tool, it requires you to define certain functions. So first, we are going to define our objective function. So I'm saying my objective function is a function of this vector x, and I'm just going to tell it the different components of this vector. So we have x, x0 or x0. This is just the zeroth element of this vector x. x1 is just the first element of it. Then here, uh, I want my function to output the value of this objective function or this cost. So I just here, this is just that objective function, the 0 0.4 times x0 squared minus 5 times x0 plus x1 squared minus uh, 6 times x1. So here I'm just defining the objective function. So uh, we will cover, we will talk about bounds on these decision variables. Uh, I don't, you may not need to have bounds on here, um, but we're going to just have, we're going to say we want to find the optimal solution somewhere between x0 and x1, uh, they, those both have to be between 0 and 10, which is the same range that we plotted them over. So we're just trying to find the optimum here, the point that minimizes this objective function staying within these bounds. All right, uh, when you solve for an optimization problem, you need to give it an initial guess. So this is, you're saying, I think this is my starting point. Guess from here and then start to iterate toward the optimum. So what your solver is going to do is, so we're just saying our initial guess is here. What the solver is doing internally is it's saying, it, it doesn't necessarily know the whole space yet. It's saying, okay, I'm here. Then uh, depending on the different solver that you're using, it's basically going to be following the slope or the gradient of this down, and it might do this iterative, iteratively, so in steps. And so this kind of solver would be following that gradient, maybe taking several iterations until it finds the point at which the uh, gradient is zero and our, uh, the, um, it's also finding no change in our objective function no matter where you go. So this is that initial guess is right here. So you do want to have a good initial guess, and sometimes you may not find a feasible solution or a solution that is uh, realizable in, within your constraints, and so you may need to try a different initial guess. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a later uh, lecture. So I'm going to go back to our Jupyter Notebook where we're defining this optimization problem. So we've defined our initial guess just at the origin of our little space. And here we just, uh, this is sort of the, the main command here where I'm saying, opt, or this is my optimal solution, is equal to the output of this function minimize. I tell it what my objective function is that I have defined above. I tell it what my initial guess is that I've also defined above. I tell it which method to use. So here we are using uh, sequential least squares uh, programming. There are lots of different algorithms that you can use and you can toy around with those algorithms until you find the ones that work. And here we're just telling it, okay, use these bounds that I defined here. So I'm just going to run this cell, and it is going to use this particular algorithm to uh, basically follow the gradient or follow the slope until it gets to an optimum. So I'm going to go ahead and click Run, and this outputs the, this nice little printout. So this is telling me that, I'll just cover some of this, it's telling me that the value of my objective function at the optimal solution is minus 24.6. Uh, here, this is important, it's telling me this was successful. So success equals true, and then this is telling me what are the optimal values that I found. So for x0, it's 6.25, and for x1, it's 3. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come here and I'm going to run that same plotting command with our whole space. But I'm going to add in a plot here where we're just going to use a scatter plot to plot this one point that tells us our optimum uh, for x0 and our optimum for x1. And we're going to see if our optimization found the same point that we found just by visual inspection.
All right, so when we have plotted this, great, this red dot shows up right where the optimum is. So hooray, we found the optimum using this mathematical optimization routine. So stay tuned, we're gonna keep adding a little bit more complexity as we go.